Well, thanks for being part of our session here today. Uh, when I saw the theme related to lessons learned, I don't know about anybody else, but in my mind, immediately, I started thinking about all the times when you make mistakes and you say, well, lesson learned. Um, and so while I won't be sharing something today that's about uh, learning that came from a mistake necessarily, what I think growing up with that kind of lessons learned response to things happening created in me was a desire to constantly experiment, to try new things, and to know that the potential outcome of that was almost assuredly going to be learning. And uh, one of the things not mentioned in my introduction is I'm also a PhD student. Um, so in my spare time, I'm continuing my own studies because I love to learn. And so I think um, what I hope for you today is that um, some of what I share will uh, inspire you to have that kind of experiment mindset with your own student engaged, uh, community engaged work. And that's what we we're able to do there. So. Hopefully you can, um, I think, see my screen here. I'm gonna talk about uh, a project we did just um, last semester, actually the conclusion of which is happening tonight um, as we transition this research into a client presentation that will take place at Edwards campus. So um, that really started with a partnership with Heart to Heart International, a Lenexa based uh, global humanitarian agency that really um, connects the heart of Kansas to the heart of the world with important work. So um, I teach primarily in our master's program and it's geared for working professionals in marketing and communication fields. And every fall we take on a client as part of our core required class in MARCOM research. And it's a very hands-on course. Students are involved in every phase of the research project. And what was particularly exciting for the first time this, this time is the students had a chance to apply for a research grant, uh, which we did receive and were able to implement in a way that really greatly enhanced our project. So I'm excited that we took on that experimental challenge. Uh, the semester kicked off with a field trip to visit our client on site. Uh, we got to go to their headquarters hear from several members of their staff, see their building, begin to really understand the impact of their work. And that was such an important catalyst ingredient in the magic that happened with that community engaged research work. One thing we heard from them was that a lot of their individual donor giving spikes in response to particular disasters. Mm -hmm. And uh, goodness knows we've had plenty of those lately. Heart to Heart, uh, for those of you that don't know what they do, they respond with medical services to natural disasters like tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, um, but also to sudden medical care needs from disease outbreaks and war. As you can imagine, um, both the war in Ukraine and the recent pandemic drove significant donor response, and we, we certainly saw that in, in the numbers that they shared with us. But what the client really wondered is given this increasingly frequent need for their humanitarian aid, um, what could they do to increase the number of recurring donors providing sustaining support to the organization? Uh, the graduate students in the, in the course carefully weighed a number of options and ultimately chose a research question focused on better understanding recurring giving motivations. Uh, they wanted to study both what was happening in Heart to Heart's own donor base, but also more broadly, uh, what drives people to give on a recurring basis to nonprofits. Every student starts the semester by um, learning some desk research techniques from our awesome KU librarians and choosing a relevant macro trend to report onto the full class. Students then are divided into sub teams so that the class can deliver a mixed methods project. The quantitative team developed a survey to both the general audiences and the agency's donor base. The qualitative team conducted and transcribed semi-structured in-depth interviews, um, identifying emerging themes. The brand team analyzed internal data and that spanned message types, formats, media, 
and a secondary team collected externally available data on donor trends and tracking Heart to Heart's media coverage and their um, donor ratings. And a final team was charged with project management because as you can imagine, the overall integration of a mixed methods approach like this created a lot of need for that. Um, and they helped develop a really cohesive research report. But the new addition, as I mentioned, was a combined effort by all of those student teams to submit a research grant offered through the KU Edwards campus. And that ended up proving highly important to our work. I challenged my students to achieve at least 100 responses in their surveys. And that gives us a chance to practice doing cross tabs and uh, one thing is that they quickly achieved hundreds of responses to their general survey this semester um, distributed through their networks. But the initial so social post that Heart to Heart International shared with their donor base yielded only a few dozen responses and we were really stuck. Um, so the grant request centered around funding and incentive and it offered a $200 donation from KU to the Heart to Heart Agency if we could achieve 100 responses to the survey from the donor base. Almost overnight, uh, we multiplied tenfold uh, the response rate and exceeded our goal. And the students, of course, learned the power of actually having funded research as opposed to trying to hope for the best with, with an unfunded approach. So um, that really was uh, an important way that we got to more than a thousand survey responses, which has never happened in the five years I've been teaching this class. So students in this program aren't um, intending to become academic researchers, but our hope for this course is to create career long learners comfortable with using research to serve their communities. Our secondary data unit early in the semester really helps them see the wealth of publicly available data and learn to select topics that will have implications for an organization and really discern quality, credible sources. I challenge them to analyze and synthesize their data across methods by tying back to the research question. And this really helps students see the relative affordances of different research methods, what each can and can't do, offset the limitations that come with each of them, with the advantages of the others, and really giving at the end of the day, the organization meaningful and actionable findings. So the students also realized it would be valuable to understand the flip side of their research question and see what barriers people perceive to becoming recurring givers. So they were able to pair that insight with their larger macro trend work that they did early in the semester on topics like what was going on in the economy, digital and online giving trends, and helped them to identify implications for future fundraising campaigns. Once the data is analyzed, the students have to select strategies to best convey their findings in both a written report and a live client presentation. So some of the key skills we work on include optimizing the data visualization to best illustrate the themes. So we really challenge them to think through how to bring their findings to light, the charts, graphs, text treatment, and different ways to really make sure that the findings are conveyed accurately and impactfully. Um, highlighting the research findings also, um, they have to select the ones with potential marketing communication implications. So as you can imagine with a thousand survey responses plus interviews, we were swimming in structured and unstructured data. So this gave them the chance to practice finding those um, results that really had some implications for the marketing communication function at the organization. And because of the grant funded incentive and increased response from heart to heart donors, we were able to share very specific findings that set up recommendations. In fact, as I mentioned tonight, um, we will be presenting a second time to heart to heart international. A subset of the students in our research class went on over winter break and conducted their capstone marketing communication strategic plan for them. And that will be used to share that and really this identity around uh, a finding that there was an opportunity to create more community among their donors 
is at the heart of what we're going to be presenting this evening. So thanks to some reminders, actually, that I received attending Cameron Piercy's presentation at a previous service learning summit. This time, I really stopped and reflected on how we could incorporate a better debriefing of the service learning experience. That was something I took away from his previous presentation that I felt was lacking in the service learning work that I was doing, because at the end of this very intense experience, the students kind of go on to their work and family life and their next class, and we don't often take the time to really debrief it. So I uh, got smart, and this time, instead of waiting for the end, I waited for almost the end, and we did a full class session debriefing this experience. And um, that really helped us to integrate uh, a more formal process of community-engaged research um, learnings that could be used in future classes as well. Uh, that hands-on nature of the project really, um, they conveyed, helped enhance their motivation and their level of effort. So one of the key things I think you'll find with service learning and community-engaged research is that boost that comes um, in the form of motivation for students and, uh, and really helps them to see the learning as it gets applied. And so obviously moving through Bloom's taxonomy here, we're getting into that more applied level that comes from having a client-based service learning experience. And it wasn't just a box to check to graduate, um, a, a grade to try to achieve, but really something that is truly useful for an organization. And that also led to student satisfaction. Um, I'm used to measuring satisfaction in my marketing world before academia, and I'm trying to bring that mindset into my teaching as well. It's not just about measuring learning outcomes, but learning to measure how satisfied students are with the experience of learning. And all these things were really boosted by what we were able to achieve with this project. So I look forward to hearing more about my colleagues' work and answering any questions you have. Um, but if anyone's looking for a service opportunity over Martin Luther King Day uh, weekend, there's many opportunities to help Heart to Heart International on Saturday and Tuesday night. And they're doing great work to bring medical supplies to really needed parts of the world. Thanks.